Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. The moment a missile strikes the central Freedom Square in Ukraine's second largest city. The video posted by Ukraine's Foreign Affairs Minister. The resulting search for survivors, one of panic and chaos. Outside the building, a total wasteland of rubble and debris. Emergency officials say at least 10 people were killed and a further 20 injured during the shelling on the city of Kharkiv. Residents here say the city is on the verge of a humanitarian crisis. Appearing via video link at the European Parliament, President Zelensky called the attack state terrorism. And worse could be to come. These satellite pictures show a massive convoy of Russian tanks and artillery, thought to be 40 miles long, heading towards Kyiv. It's now thought Russia has 75% of its military capability inside Ukraine. And now a new justification from Russia's foreign affairs minister for the invasion, Sergei Lavrov, saying they must stop Ukraine acquiring nuclear weapons. Many of the representatives never got this far in his speech. Dozens of diplomats deciding to walk out in protest. Russians keep attacking kindergartens. And the UN General Assembly will vote this week to isolate Russia by deploring its aggression against Ukraine and demanding Russian troops stop fighting and withdraw. No country has a veto in the General Assembly, so the resolution is expected to pass. Before I continue with During my the conference, Ukraine's ambassador read out a heartbreaking message from a Russian soldier to his mum before he was killed. Mama, I'm in Ukraine. There is a real war raging here. I'm afraid. We are bombing all of the cities together, even targeting civilians. We were told they would welcome us, and they are falling under our armored vehicles, throwing themselves under the wheels, not allowing us to pass. They call us fascists. Mama, this is so hard. Boris Johnson is in Poland for talks with the country's prime minister. He came under impassioned questioning from a Ukrainian journalist. Because you are afraid. Because NATO is not willing to defend. Because NATO is afraid of a World War III, but it is already started. And these are Ukrainian children who are there taking the hit. You are talking about more sanctions, Prime Minister, but Roman Abramovich is not sanctioned. He is in London. His children are not in the bombardments. His children are there in London. Put children are in Netherlands. In Germany, in mansions, where are all these mansions seized? I don't see that. He went on to say the world needs to prepare for millions of refugees. Putin's invasion has already forced hundreds of thousands of people to flee their homes, and we must prepare for an even larger outflow, perhaps numbered in the millions. But the refugee crisis is already here. More people arriving in this eastern Polish town. I want back to Ukraine and study in math, physics. I want, I want study in university. I don't sit here. I want study. In other news, the east coast of Australia has seen its worst flooding on record. In New South Wales, locals watch the streets become totally engulfed in floodwaters. Footage showing residents stranded on rooftops with whole towns underwater. At least 10 people have so far been killed. Authorities have warned the area to brace for more heavy rainfall and further flooding over the next few days. We must all prepare ourselves for the possibility that lives have been lost. Whilst I would love to think, and, and I truly hope, uh, that we will not see any deaths from this event. Uh, I think that it is unrealistic uh, that a disaster of this magnitude will mean that there are no lives lost. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the Channel Studios in Lagos.